Hello again, watch friends. Welcome back. Pop quiz. Which of these three watches is a Grand Seiko? Sorry, trick question. They all are. The GMT is a beautiful mechanical piece I received as a 25th anniversary gift. I did a video on this. It's the SBGM021. It's a true GMT because, among other things, the hour hand is independent. It's got a lovely cream dial. And, of course, it has the usual Grand Seiko exquisite finishing. The spring drive is a SBGA085. It's what I call the entry-level spring drive. I love wearing it and did a video on this one as well. In fact, I also did a video comparing the SBGA085 with the Seiko Saarb 033, asking the question if the Saarb was a baby grand. I'll put a link to that one above as well. I think the spring drive technology is so underrated and a real tour de force. It uses modern technology, quartz time reference, electromagnets as a precise braking mechanism to regulate the accuracy, and traditional mechanical watchmaking technique for the power and power delivery. Thirdly, the high accuracy quartz, or HAQ, H-A-Q. This is why we're here today, watch ladies and watch gentlemen. As a watch collecting goal, I wanted to have a representative of each of the Grand Seiko models or types. That would be mechanical, quartz, spring drive, high beat, GMT, and chronograph. There's no hurry, it's just a plan. Just a quick note before I review the SBGT241 hack. I'm not going to get into the Seiko Grand Seiko controversy. Comments such as Grand Seiko is nothing more than a Seiko and I never buy one or something similar are not productive, not worth entertaining, and don't move the discussion along. It is a fact, not fake news, that Seiko is a huge company and makes watches that sell from less than $100 to over 30000 Most importantly, Seiko is the ultimate in-house company. There's no denying that. They make everything related to their watches, in-house. So if you don't like Grand Seiko models for what they are, fine. Maybe you should skip this video. On the other hand, or wrist, if you have an open mind and want to learn, keep viewing. By the end of the video, you may still not like Grand Seiko, but at least you will, hopefully, be better informed. And now, the Grand Seiko SBGT 241 High Accuracy Quartz Watch. A little background. The Grand Seiko was created by Taro Tanaka, a young designer whom Seiko had hired right out of school. Inspired by the way Swiss watches sparkled brilliantly, Tanaka set out to design a watch with sharp edges, brushed surfaces, and a mirror finish that would rival anything created by the Swiss. In 1960, the first Grand Seiko, reference 3180, debuted. Until about 2010, Grand Seiko was Japan's best kept secret. But since then, Grand Seiko watches have become available in the rest of the world. Until 2017, each Grand Seiko watch had both the Seiko logo and the Grand Seiko name on the dial. The Seiko logo at 12 o'clock and the Grand Seiko and model name at 6 o'clock. The SBGT241 is an example of Grand Seiko as a separate brand. Grand Seiko is prominently and the only marquee logo displayed on the dial. The razor edge polishing of the hands and markers gives this creation the unique Grand Seiko signature as does the 
exquisitely sharp mirror finish achieved by Seiko's Zeratsu technique. And the watch is assembled and tested by hand by the same master watchmakers. Seiko has been doing some interesting things with dials in the last year. For example, the SBGH267G in limited edition has initials GS in a delicate mosaic that radiates, radiates out from the center of the dial in a geometric pattern. The SBGJ227 limited edition, otherwise known as the Peacock, just look at that. Just check out that green dial with the subtle pattern. Then there's the SBGD202, an 18 karat rose gold case frames a black dial to which the stars twinkle just as they do on a clear dark night in the sky in the mountains that surround the Micro Artist Studio in central Japan. The addition of depth and richness to the dial is quite distinctive. So let's talk about the dial of the SBGT241. I just love subtle or hidden aspects of a watch, any watch, such as the case with a 241. From a distance, and maybe without my glasses, it looks a little like a Grand Seiko snowflake. Something is definitely going on with that dial. Then, getting closer, and perhaps wearing my glasses, I see there is some texture, or maybe a pattern. But what is that pattern? Oh, it looks like little GS letters displayed horizontally across the dial. That's pretty cool. But wait, it's a repeating GS9F in honor of the movement. Really nice design, since at a distance looks like a simple pattern, but up close and personal, it's nicely textured and a monogram dial, not just some squiggles. Still, there is one more surprise. Just to the left of and below the four o'clock marker, there is a 9F25, the actual caliber of the movement of this piece. Nowhere else on the dial is 9F25. For a watch collector nerd like myself, especially a Grand Seiko watch collector nerd like myself. This is so cool. Just a little side note. I recently visited the Seiko Boutique on Madison Avenue in New York City. And we were discussing some of the newer models. And I happened to have my 241. The sales staff wasn't even aware of the super secret SF25 on the dial. I pointed it out, and they thought it was as cool as I did. In addition to the dial itself, you see the usual Grand Seiko highly finished hour and minute hands. These sword style hands have razor like mirror finishing. The blued seconds hand ticks with extreme precision and stability. There's no shuddering, and is long enough to arc across the detailed minutes track. Nice. The applied hour markers are also highly polished in the Grand Seiko tradition. Lastly, the day-date window shows fine black text on a white background surrounded by a highly finished outer window. On some watches, a date or day-date complication distracts from the visual harmony of the dial, but here it seems to complement the overall balanced aesthetic of the dial. Nicely done. So by now, you probably know that the Grand Seiko SBGT241 is a 25th anniversary piece celebrating 25 years since the first 9F quartz caliber was introduced. Only 1,500 pieces are being made of this high-accuracy quartz watch. So what is high-accuracy quartz, or HAQ? First, let's put some things in perspective. A really high-end mechanical watch might be accurate to minus four to plus six seconds per day. That is the cost specification. 
Some mechanical watches exceed that and can ch achieve maybe plus or minus two seconds per day accuracy. A good quality quartz watch is probably good for accuracy of maybe 15 seconds a month or about half a second per day. A quartz watch with a thermocoupled mechanism, which accounts for variations in temperature to maintain accuracy, usually runs within 10 seconds accuracy per year. This special 25th anniversary Grand Seiko movement has been tweaked to yield 5 seconds per year accuracy. That's simply incredible. And that tiny little 5-pointed gold star in the dial is a subtle indication of this. Any watch, from whatever brand, that can achieve about 10 to 15 seconds a year accuracy or better is considered HAQ, or hack. More on the movement in this watch in a bit. The case measures 39.1 millimeters in diameter, is 10.9 millimeters thick, and the lug width is 20 millimeters. Lug to lug is a relatively short 44 millimeters. It's slim and elegant, and it looks just right on my wrist. It has a stainless steel case with Zeratsu finishing with lugs that have polished sides and brushed tops. One of the most distinctive features of any Grand Seiko, and perhaps the most recognizable element underlying the brand's emphasis on craftsmanship, is the extremely fine finishing on every surface of the watch. Bracelets, cases, indices, hands, all have clear lines, sharp edges, and a mirror finish achieved by artisans with decades of experience in Seiko's unique Zeratsu, or blade polishing, technique. This is a centuries-old method of hand-polishing elite Japanese fighting swords. These craftsmen and craftswomen are admired within Seiko for their ability to achieve immaculate polishing effects on watch components. By the way, the art of Zeratsu is so difficult to perform without exposing the metals to transforming heat, it cannot be executed by machine, hence one of the handmade aspects of a Grand Seiko watch. So, with the Zeratsu Poly's case and a white dial, the Grand Seiko 241 also has a crystal, a high-definition, dual-curved sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating for exceptional clarity. It's one of the least reflective watches I currently own. The stainless steel case back is adorned with the Grand Seiko Lion emblem in 18 karat gold. And I've often thought it would be way cool to have that Seiko Lion escutcheon on the dial. Maybe we'll see that someday in the future. The bracelet is an interesting three-part bead of rice bracelet. This is my first bead of rice bracelet on any watch, and I like it. It has sort of a 1980s vibe, given its thinness and flexibility. Of course, it's beautifully polished, with a Grand Seiko monogram on the clasp. However, given its high polish, I fear it may be susceptible to scratches. The two-button fold-over clasp seems solid and secure. No worries there. Now, back to the movement. I've already discussed the accuracy of the SPGT241 as plus or minus five seconds per year. Until recently, that was one of the world's most accurate, if not the most accurate watch. However, for 2019, Citizen has announced a new movement, the Caliber 0100, featuring a thermocompensated 8.4 megahertz quartz crystal oscillator and spec to, get this, plus or minus one second per year. You heard that right, plus or minus one second per year. Wow. In 1993, the first Grand Seiko 9F quartz caliber, caliber 9F83, was released. It had many advances for the time, including hands that were as long as those on every other Grand Seiko watch. The calendar change was instantaneous. 
and it had enhanced durability and reliability. These features were possible due to, among other things, a backlash auto-adjust mechanism to eliminate any shuttering of the second hand, a twin pulse control system to deliver increased torque, and a special construction to minimize the risk of dust coming into contact with the gear train and stepping motor. Most course movements from a variety of brands are products of automatic assembly. Grand Seiko's 9F course movement with this variety of complex functions is assembled entirely by hand. Two expert craftsmen combine their individual talents to preserve the high quality standard of Grand Seiko. With one assembling the watch, including the date indicator, and the other in charge of the movement. Another feature of the 241 is that the movement is hermetically sealed from the battery compartment to prevent dust from entering the movement when the battery is changed approximately every three years. The sibling SBGV238 with a yellow gold bezel has a display back which shows off the SF25. Although it's a coarse movement, there are Tokyo stripes and fine finishing. Something worth looking at, for sure. One of the best features of the 241 is the instantaneous date change. This has an extremely high coolness coefficient, especially for a watch anorak like myself. Let's take a look at this function in action. See it? Oh, did you miss it? Let's see it in slow motion. The only downside is that the date change occurs at 4 minutes and 50 seconds past midnight. I would have expected it to occur exactly at midnight, given that the watch is a Grand Seiko. However, I verified with the Seiko Boutique in New York City that their version of this watch does exactly the same thing as mine. And mine does it reliably. Apparently so does theirs. Instantaneous date change? Pretty cool, no? In summary, I like the 241 for several reasons. The Grand Seiko finishing and quality is exquisite. Grand Seiko is well known for its Suratsu polishing on the case, hands, and markers. It's classy, to say the least. And very few watches at this price level, mid-thousands, have this level of quality. It's totally all in-house. Seiko grows their own quartz crystals, pre-ages them, and only the best ones with the highest rate stability are used for their HAQ watches and for the timing standard on spring drive watches. They make their own dials, cases, movements, etc., and the movements are hand-assembled. This watch is unique. Only 1,500 are being made. That's not so important, but it adds to some exclusivity. And since Grand Seiko has expertise in both mechanical watches and microelectronics, they can produce a variety of watches with leading edge technology like almost no other company. For example, heavy duty motors in this watch so there is no bounce on the seconds hand. A thermal compensated movement to increase the accuracy regardless of temperature variations, just to name two. Finally, accuracy. At plus or minus five seconds per year, this is one of the world's most accurate watches. The only watch that is more accurate is the new Citizen announced at Basel World 2018. And as I mentioned, that has a accuracy of plus or minus one second per year. Still, five seconds per year is amazing. And we're not talking a radio watch or a satellite watch that receives an external timing signal. So what's the bottom line? Perhaps Grand Seiko is an acquired taste, like scotch or gin, or maybe it's a matter of different cultural tastes. The cultures of North America, Asia, and Europe are often different, and that could easily influence someone's watch preferences. This may partly explain why Grand Seiko is often such a polarizing brand. It also may be worthwhile to spend 
about three thousand dollars on the best quartz watch rather than a mediocre mechanical piece for the same price. Only you can decide. Obviously, I did. Parochial mechanical movement arguments aside, I truly believe the Grand Seiko SBGT 241G should be classified as a high horology watch. I'm Art Landberger. This is my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll return soon. I'll see you next time.